Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the next session of uh, Spatial Data Science Symposium uh, 2023. Um, this uh, thematic session is about spatially explicit machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, we have invited uh, seven researchers uh, from uh, both in academia and industry to join the panel discussion about their opinions and thoughts about spatial explicit AI and machine learning. So uh, I'm Gong Chen Mai from the University of Georgia Geography Department. Uh, uh, we have on the panelist we have Professor Angela Yao from uh, UGA Geography as well, um, Professor Yao Yichang Zhang, uh, Yao Yijiang from uh, University of uh, Minnesota Computer Science Department. Uh, we have Professor Yichun Xie from the University of Maryland uh, Department for Geographic Science. We have Professor Rui Zhu from University of Bristol uh, Geography Department. We have Professor uh, Song Gao uh, from the University of Wisconsin Geography. And we also have Dr. Ni Lao from Google uh, Search. Um, so welcome to our panel session. So before to get the ball rolling, I will first uh, discuss uh, the general topics of what is spatially explicit AI and uh, um, discuss about uh, its impact. So, so in fact, the spatially explicit model is a concept proposed by uh, various researchers. For example, Professor Michael Gutschild has included, has discussed a concept about spatially explicit model. He said a model is said to be spatially explicit when it differentiates behaviors and predictions according to spatial locations. And he also predict, um, discussed about four tasks, uh, four tests, like invariance test, representation test, formulation test, and outcome test. Um, so in the machine learning and artificial intelligence era, uh, we have think about, okay, uh, what does that spatially explicit model means in uh, this AI, uh, AI errors. So uh, from my humble opinions, I think um, it means we want to improve the performance of current state-of-art AI models by using spatial thinking and spatial inductive bias, such as spatial heterogeneity, distant decay effect, and map projections. However, we also saw a lot of um, uh, different definitions of, of this concept. That's why we want to organize panels and uh, try to think about uh, what do this concept mean to us and to the whole domain. So uh, generally speaking, I think artificial intelligence have two branches, symbolic AI and connectionist AI. So in symbolic, we have knowledge graph, logical reasoning. In connectionist AI, we have neural network, representation learning, and so on and so forth. Uh, when it comes to spatial data, we can, uh, when we want to do conduct spatial uh, AI predictions on spatial and temporal data, if you want to, uh, we can also think about uh, how to incorporate spatial thinking and spatial in principles into this model design or ontology design. Then for symbolic AI, we have geographic knowledge graph. For connectionist AI, we have spatially explicit machine learning, and which uh, set up the landscape for spatially explicit AI, which can be used on various different domains, such as ecology, remote sensing, urban data science, and so on and so forth. Um, in fact, uh, this concept of spatially explicit AI uh, and geo AI has been uh, widely used in a lot of literature published in the leading journals in our domain. So here is a uh, four examples from uh, IGGS, from Transcendent GS, from Annuals of AEG, and also from the ISPR, uh, sorry, from International Journal of Applied Earth Observation. So that's also, um, so we can see more and more this term have been mentioned by our, um, by the researcher from our domain. Um, but we also noticed some challenges and issues. Uh, here we have listed a few uh, uncertainties, bias, um, explainabilities, ethics, and privacy reproducibilities, uh, responsibilities, and sustainabilities. So um, now we find out, okay, uh, there is a challenge and issues. Uh, that's the reason we have uh, think about, okay, how should we tackle these problems? And uh, uh, that's why we have uh, two special issues related to this topic. The first special issue is in Geographic Information, uh, International Journal of Geographic Information Science, about specific for uh, geospatial foundation models. And the second special issue is actually uh, right on the topic, spatially explicit artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, so that's just a very preliminary introduction for the panel sessions. Now, 
uh, we just want to hear the voice from all of our um, panelists uh, to keep the ball rolling. We have listed uh, four uh, panel questions uh, to uh, uh, to raise the discussions between our panelists. So the first question is, uh, uh, to your understanding, what is a spatially explicit AI? And the second question is more about uh, uh, how do research, especially in spatial data science domain, uh, engage in the development of cutting edge spatial explicit AI technologies? And the third question is, uh, can you point out some interesting research directions, basically some future research directions under the umbrellas of uh, the spatial explicit AI? And the third one is, uh, uh, okay, what's the major challenge here? Uh, and the third question is more uh, for industry, our industry pan, uh, panelist, which is, uh, uh, do you think spatial explicit AI is also important, not only for academia, but also from industry perspective? Um, let's just uh, uh, get started for our panel discussion. Um, since we have uh, uh, seven panelists, so let's just invite our first uh, panel speaker, Dr. Uh, sorry, Professor Angel Yao. Thank you, Gunchen. Well, it's the same, Dr. or Professor. <laughs> it's the same. Well, thank you, everyone. I, I really feel honored to be here because um, really, uh, I, as someone who was using really just the traditional machine learning methods or AI methods in my research in the past, um, I'm really also a, a learner and follower. Um, I, I'm, I'm excited and thrilled to see this new research field, especially explicit AI and geo AI. As Gunchen introduced before the concept, uh, kind of the initial motivation was not really new at all. And people have started our um, started a long time ago, 20 years ago, even longer than that. Uh, but the, the new advancement, particularly advancement in AI uh, and also availability of location-based or a lot of other data, but particularly location-based big data, um, really make it possible so i can see it really uh, interdisciplinary and, and the panel here i see really represents that interdisciplinary nature so that's one uh, and the the field itself really make me remind me of kind of the historic view from from the traditional statistics and then there was the need for spatial statistics, and that's an exciting new that was an exciting new field, and still it's very 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 uh, relevant right now. Spatial statistics um, makes use of uh, consider spatial characteristics and improve extend from traditional statistics, and now it's widely used in all kinds of disciplines, not only geography. So this is really I, I feel to me um, my my. To the best of my knowledge, I feel like uh, this is just as exciting, or if not more, uh, than that. Um, we're going to also introduce a few um, kind of initial uh, kind of the, uh, the initial development of the idea in the past, a kind of a history of this in the past. Um, and he mentioned, I think one of the example, it really depends on the definition. What is the, what, what is spatial explicit model, right? I, I have this uh, in our conversation at professional meetings. I, I saw this, I encountered this question all the time. So what is the difference between machine learning and spatially explicit machine learning? Uh, what is the difference between AI and geo AI? I encountered this question all the time. Um, I don't know. I did. I don't know if my I answered correctly. But from it, really, what I feel is it really depends on the definition of it. I'm going to mention the doctor, um, good child, the, the the test, the four tests, right? Um, and it could be other definition of it. So now it's the time for us to define it. And from all the the various definitions, and particularly the classic definition of spatial explicit, what I feel is that the essence, in essence, to me, to my understanding, is really the spatial concepts and spatial characteristic matter. We need to incorporate it in machine learning model instead of just put it kind of hard coded somewhere representing the same way as other traditional types of data. So in, very importantly, not only location is important, but not only location, but place itself, the geographic concepts it's, itself is important. Um, spatial relations, important. I know um, most of you are 
can everyone here, the other panelists except me, you are really doing cutting edge research on that front, how, how to represent that, how to uh, extend the current AI model to represent spatial, not only location place, but also spa spatial relationship. Um, and the other is geographic context matter. And finally, most important to me, very dear to me is spatial characteristics. Uh, spatial characteristics like um, spatial heterogeneity, uh, spatial autocorrelation, all those things, it's not explicit data. It's not something like you can code it right away as numbers, but it's, it's there, it's characteristic. How do we have that incorporate in the current, uh, the traditional extent from traditional machine learning or AI models to have that represented and captured, considered? I think those are really the important issues for for spatial explicit model. If they do, if all those are, I shouldn't say them all, but some of those are considered to need that spatially explicit. Yeah. So I know we have many panelists. I will stop there. Oh, thank you. That's a very uh, insightful um, answer for these questions. Um. So let's uh, invite our next panelist. Uh, no, Professor Yi Chun, is he here? Uh, Gong Chen, uh, Yi Chun is not here yet. Uh, you can, yeah. Let me try to see if we can. Then let's just uh, uh, go to our next panelist. Uh, I think he, he has some technical difficulty. Uh, he sent me a message. <laughs> but let's just uh, uh, invite our next speaker, uh, uh, Professor uh, Yao, uh, Yao Yi. Yao Yi Please. Thank you, Kenshin. Uh, are we, which question are we looking at? Kenshin, you are muted. Yeah, Kenshin, you are muted. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, you are invited to discuss all the all these questions, but you can also peek which question you are most interested in. Yeah. You don't need to- Oh, okay. Them. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for organizing the panel and this is very cool. So I, I wanted to talk about, uh, I want to talk more about uh, the major challenges in the area of research and applications. I think um, spatial data, or especially today, we have lots of numbers of different types of spatial data. It gives us a lot of opportunities to work on different stuff. But one example is we can see people start to use uh, existing road vector data, align them to safe light imagery to help extract or provide training data for extracting road pixels from different areas. Right? And not only for uh, map data, other types of contextual data, like Professor Yao was talking about, we can use contextual data to help us describe the environment and help us to do all kinds of prediction and forecasting for transportation, for public health. It's all very interesting. Um, one major challenge I see here is, well, that's the fundamental challenge, is how do we build machine learning models that would be able to handle spatial data? Uh, when we look at spatial data, it's not just uh, a data type that has a spatial dimension. We have different ways of describing things on Earth. So we have, for example, you can use a point, you can use a polygon, so multiple spatial scales. And take that example, say we want to train a foundation model. In computer vision, you take multiple uh, images and you train a foundation model. But for spatial data, if we start to train the foundation model, sometimes you have data sets describing census tracts. Other times you have data sets uh, describing county level, right? So how do you, how are we going to train the model so that the model knows, hey, this is just an aggregation of the data. It's an abstract level. It does not mean everywhere in that census tract you have the same value. So that's a typical challenge when we are handling um, spatial data with multiple data skills. And also, um, for a long time, people start to use, uh, for example, things like if we want to predict the value nearby 
locations will have a similar value. Like take a deep learning model, for example, say we want to work on air quality prediction. And that's a very uh, straightforward way you can do with any machine learning model to constrain the model so that the uh, output will be smooth in space. This is what we usually call as a soft constraint. Right? We are encouraging the model to have similar result, but we are not really enforced the model to do. Say, okay, you cannot really violate the constraint, right? We only encourage the model. So one way to think about the problem is uh, similar in other types of machine learning models to combine physics rules in the model, people start to work on different ways to say, hey, here are some physics constraints the machine learning model cannot violate, right? It's not encouraging anymore, it's not regularization, it's fixed rules. So that requires deep understanding of all these optimization goals and how to design machine learning or architecture to be able to do that and also optimization processes. So there are still lots of interesting challenges in method uh, that we have to do. Everyone who are interested in this area will have to work together to be able to overcome and to be able to use all kinds of spatial data to solve a practical problem. And also I want to talk about applications. It's just like GIS, um, Geo AI, Spatial AI, anything with data-driven model and also location data, we are always looking for an application to work on, right? It can be a transportation application, it can be public health, it can be national security. So one major challenge is to be able to understand how the domain works and design a method and also a study to be able to solve problems in that area. And this is, this is a very interesting field, but uh, also require uh, a collaborative work and also to require the encouragement from maybe the organization, from the department, because not all departments encourage interdisciplinary work. And also look at all these spatial issues Genshin just shared. I think those are great places um, to publish and to talk about this type of interdisciplinary work. All right, I will stop here. I'll let other people talk. Thanks. Uh, thanks both for uh, Yao and me for sharing the ins insightful thoughts. I, I totally agree with uh, like the major challenge is about like how to let machine learning models handle spatial data and uh, because the data set, uh, the spatial data structure is so challenging, like you said, um, somehow we have to uh, redesign the model architecture to make it a better fit to our applications. So the uh, next uh, have our next panelist, uh, Professor uh, Yiqun uh, Xie from University of Maryland. Uh, sure, yeah. I, I think I will uh, just maybe cover the question on the interesting research directions under especially explicit AI. Um, yes. So I think one interesting problem I observed is uh, when we try to apply one machine learning model to the spatial data, the model will work very well in some locations and then uh, the performance at the other locations may be sacrificed or uh, pretty bad. And also uh, when you train a model at one location or one region and you try to apply the same model to, an, to another location, it normally doesn't work so well. So this is a very common problem uh, we're facing in many applications. I think this leads to two interesting uh, research directions. One is heterogeneity aware learning, which myself is exploring a lot. Um, so here, uh, given one data, given one problem, maybe at large scale, uh, we don't really know what's the spatial footprints of these different heterogeneous functions. So the data in different places may be generated by different functions. So how do we build a model to automatically recognize which locations they share the same function, which locations they share, uh, they should have a different function. Um, so I think building such a model can be very interesting and also will be very useful in practice as well. Um, so the other uh, direction related to this is uh, spatial fairness. So fairness aware AI is a very hot topic today. And when we try to deploy models in real applications, it's important to explicitly consider the fairness. And if you have a model that works pretty well for some locations, but very bad for the others, and if you use those results to make important decisions, for example, uh, spatial AI is commonly used to generate maps. 
to help uh, decision makers. And if these maps are indirectly or directly used to make in, uh, decisions such as resource distribution, and if you have those uh, those kinds of bias in it, it, it can hurt uh, really the vulnerable population, especially places with, without a lot of training data sets. So the performance at those regions may be particularly bad. Um, so we do want to explicitly consider these issues and guarantee the fairness when we try to deploy these models in real applications. So I think uh, these are very interesting research directions. And uh, talking about recent trends, I think uh, everyone's talking about uh, foundation models, self-supervised learning. Um, so myself, I'm very interested in uh, thinking about how spatial data can provide some unique characteristics for the design of self-supervised learning methods. So there are many self-supervised learning methods for image data, for text data. I think there are certain uh, unique characteristics in, for example, remote sensing satellite data, which can be utilized to design those algorithms um, to, to have better performance or generalizability for uh, those domain tasks, maybe in remote sensing. So we have, we have a recent example where we try to use uh, the spatial temporal relationships between different scenes to actually do the supervision. In those cases, we don't need any labeled data set, but we can perform many classification classification tasks such as uh, cloud masking. Um, so I think those are all very interesting research directions uh, to explore. Uh, maybe I'll just quickly cover the other uh, question. Um, so how do researchers in GIS engage in cutting edge AI research? Um, so I think currently the main, the main culture in GIS is to publish in journals. Um, but I think in order to participate in those cutting edge AI research, it's important for us to step out in a uh, step out of the comfort zone and then go to those other AI conferences, computer science conferences, and maybe Gunchen and some others will agree with me. Um, so I think it's important to look at all the recent advanced methods and then submit papers in there, get the reviewer comments, uh, understand how uh, how the, and, and participate in the development development of, of those cutting edge methods. So when I go to those conferences, and um, if you explain to others you are you are doing bioinformatics, and then everyone understands what you're doing, but if you say you're doing things like geoinformatics, geospatial data, and many don't really know uh, about those fields very well. So I think in order to better uh, for, for branding purposes and for people to better recognize the importance of geospatial data and problems it's important for more of us to go to those conferences and also submit our paper in there, making presentations in there. Um, so that's the other question. I, I think that that's all for me. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I think uh, you mentioned a very, very important point, and I totally agree with, uh, uh, with for, for, first of all, the spatial heterogeneity and the fairness is become more and more important, not only uh, in our domain, but also in the general AI domain as well. Uh, but I also agree with your other point, like we need to step off of the comfort zone and um, to go to the uh, AI conference to uh, maybe for the branding reason, but also bring some, uh, get inspiration from other. I also agree like uh, bioinformatics, uh, they have a very um, like open, open mind. Like I, when I go to the AI conference, there are many, many bioinformatics researchers there to communicate their ideas. Um, okay, let's uh, invite our next panelist, uh, Professor Ray Zhu. Right. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Ray. I'm from Bristol. So thanks a lot for inviting me on this panel. And uh, I'm more going to focus on the third and the fourth questions here, I guess. And I feel like they are really related. The third one is more about the research directions and the third, fourth one is more about the challenges. And I believe that since we have those challenges, this also gave us the opportunities to make them as exciting new research directions. So um, I have several uh, discussion points here. Uh, hopefully uh, I can first discuss a little bit of them. Maybe it can trigger other panel leads discussion later. So uh, I feel like the one of the key challenges in GeoAI or spatially explicit machine learning is really the data or let's say the quality of the data. 
So we do have a volume of data these days from social media, from remote sensing, uh, from all types of you know, social sensors, urban sensors, environmental sensors. So we are not in an age that we are lacking of data, but we are in an age like we are lacking a high quality data. This also reflects back to actually today's uh, keynote by Professor uh, Anna Bessery. Uh, that the key point is like, you know, how could we use the our knowledge about the missing data, about the bears of the data, using this type of data to inform of our model and inform our decision making. I think this is still a key challenge. We know how to, uh, you know, make models or you know build some models on the existing data but actually we don't know how to use the buyers of the data how to really use the missing part of the data uh, i believe this is definitely definitely a challenge and another relevant challenge here is um multimodal modeling so right now in machine learning or foundation models this kind of very exciting uh, machine learning techniques most of, of them are very limited on, on only analyzing one type of data. For example, we use CNN mostly for, for images. Uh, we use RNN for sequential data. Uh, we use graph neural network for graphs. But however, you know, uh, for, for geography, to address some real world problems, many often uh, we, we need to combine all these different types of data. And combining them itself is already a problem, it's already a challenge. And we have a lot of like uh, uh, techniques such as knowledge graphs to, to integrate all these different format of data. However, we are also liking, I feel like we are liking also specially explicit models that can take care of this multimodal data so that we can combine all the different data sources, although these data different data data sources are in different data formats. And how do we do so? I think that's a key challenge, but again, it can be a research opportunity. Uh, so that's all about the data. And uh, the second discussion point I want to bring up here uh, is more about uh, theory again, uh, theory and the data, because we call this session spatially explicit machine learning. And as we all know, machine learning is more data driven. And the reason we call it spatially explicit, at least from my perspective, is we are trying to add our domain knowledge into the whole modeling and representation process. However, I feel like right now uh, for geography, we have our series uh, are not, compared to the data driven methods, our series are still very limited. We're mostly talking about the spatial dependency. We talk about the spatial heterogeneity, but still we don't have a very solid framework on how do we really incorporate these different types of spatial theories uh, into machine learning models. And this actually also reflect back to another session that before us, which is about the context, um, sorry, context in spatial analysis that were organized by uh, Lee Van Wolf and Zi uh, Zi Li and so on. And I feel like, you know, probably this kind of local models more from a statistical perspective, uh, those kind of local models can help us on um, building our data-driven methods. But again, how to combine these two worlds, uh, we need a lot of, a, a lot of uh, efforts here. And also we are in our community, we are unsure. Uh, we all know that we need to combine them, but what is the sweet point? You know, uh, because some scientists argue that, you know, with the foundation model, if we have enough data, maybe we don't need a theory. But some domain scientists still argue that, you know, we need theories so that we need less data. So I believe there must be a sweet point here, but what is this sweet point? And whether this sweet point should depend on the application and should depend on the regions, uh, all these kind of questions are still open. So I hope other panelists can also discuss a little bit on this point. Um, the next challenge I feel like uh, is, uh, is more about the responsibility AI or ethics in using special explicit machine learning. Um, different from a pure computer scientist, I feel like our domain has its unique, which means like we often need to uh, quantify the uncertainty and do sensitivity analysis and also try to understand what the model gives us, try to understand why the model gave us this type of 
uh, outputs. This also reflects back to our yesterday. I remember yesterday's uh, wonderful keynotes by uh, by by uh, uh, keynotes about the uh, what is the prediction or what is the projection. And uh, you know, in our field, probably projection is more sensible than prediction because projection give us more context. So how do we use the context to explain or to try to understand the model? Um, that's also a question here. Um, and the last but not the least, sorry to take a long time here, but last but not least is I feel like the education is also very important and we are, we are lacking resource here because uh, from my own perspective on my, on my teaching experience or, or advising my, while well, I'm advising my PhD students, very often the younger generation of geographers, they don't have the background on, on computer science and sometimes they get scared of using those fancy tensor floor or, 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 or PyTorch tools. And even though we're providing you know, them the seminars, tutorials, sometimes they just, uh, they just feel scared. So what, you know, as geographers or as a community here, as a special data scientist, can we develop you know, a site of more accessible tools for our colleagues, not our, only our PhD students, but our colleagues? and who are more towards the social science part maybe. Uh, that's also a key challenging for us. Because, and, but this can be very important because this provide those um, uh, uh, more social scientists uh, colleagues the, the, the ways to get access to this state of the art uh, methods. Because at the end, they are the ones probably addressing the real world problem. They understand better than us, like computer scientists, about the real problems there. And they can also bring new blood into our or new thoughts into our field. So how do the, 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 the question here is how do we build these kind of new tools, accessible tools for our whole community widely? Uh, that's also going to be a challenge for us. Uh, I think I'm going to stop here uh, in case uh, other colleagues here have more to add on. Thanks, Will. That's a uh, very insightful and uh... Um, I think you covered a lot of important topics, uh, not only for the AI, but also for a more general perspective, like uh, education perspective. I, I like your answer. And uh, let's also, uh, let's invite our next panelist, uh, Professor Song Gao. Sorry, I think I mute uh, myself. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you, Gunchen. Um, yeah, I, I uh, agree with the, also the panelists about uh, various points and also want to uh, bring back to the question of some interesting uh, directions because this is really uh, exciting field. Um, um, I do have, actually, I have uh, three slides to share this question. So maybe Genchen, you can uh, unshare yourself and then I will, yeah. So um, yeah, the. The, the key point of this section is about spatially specific AI, as also another um, panelist discussed. Uh, you know, we want to bring our spatial concepts and principles, such as spatial hierarchy or neighborhoods or heterogeneity interactions, into the, those AI models and to enable the development, development of the spatially explicit uh, AI. And here I just want to share. Uh, three things I uh, I found uh, would be very interesting. The first one is uh yeah uh, already mentioned about the multi model uh, learning, especially about the spatial context, because we have a very rich geospatial data, such as from satellite images or from uh, social sensors or from those in car in car vehicle sensors, such as street views, and also from those like uh, traffic loops. We can you know how can we combine them together. So there are two ways. For example, one way is maybe we can, similar to the test image contrastive learning, we can also enable the spatially explicit contrastive learning. I believe Ya yeah, uh in, in this year's ICML has a very good work about CSP. And another way is a more traditional way is we can concatenate those different representation learning through the spatial relations. Here is another example, which uh, just published last month at on IGGS, is about the hierarchical spatial embedding, which can concatenate the street embedding or points of interest embedding and land use embedding through the spatial relationship. For example, we know that points are located at 
along streets, and streets are connected to the certain land use or certain polygons. And through those spatial relations, they can be connected. So we found that uh, after the concatenation, they are good for the traffic modeling. The second direction, which is very important for geo geography and also earth sciences, is actually the integration of the physics or mechanistic models with AI. For Hi, example, the slides is not moving, but I'm, oh, okay. I'm, yeah. So, uh, so maybe you want to, yeah, <laughs> I guess you want to. Yeah, this, this is good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, maybe we want to concatenate some of the layers, you know, into the you know, deep learning model to enable this, you know, physics informed or mechanistic model integrated AI learning. So lastly, and there's definitely a, um, about foundational model. This is the last, uh, you know, topic I want to share today. And, you know, also uh, Yano sent out one uh, notification previously about the geo machine chart. I think it will be, you know, welcome, you know, any uh, new submission or, you know, uh, challenging opening next year. But uh, how can we develop this geo AI enabled GS analysis with the power of the large language model, foundational model? For example, if we don't input any prompt or data, just ask ChatGPT to answer the question, the percentage of water bodies within 10 kilometer buffer distance of state capital, Wisconsin, although he can, you know, give you the workflow, however, you to require data and also the connectivity between the, you know, the tools such as, you know, like a model builder in traditional GS. However, if you adding those like data location, also other prompts, because after GPT 3.5, they can also automatically generate in the, for example, Python code. And you can further connecting those different tools together as a spatial analysis workflow. For example, if you adding those just look data location, you will get this workflow to answer this special question, you also get this Python code in GeoPandas. So I think this is definitely very exciting, although there is not 100% correct right now, but definitely we can do more around this direction. So uh, yeah, that's the three research uh, directions I'm very excited about. And yeah, I want back to the other questions for the discussion. Thank you.